So within the organization, as a PCI DSS, uh, subject matter expert or specialist or manager or whatever rules, PCI DSS analyst, regardless of the rule, you are going to be the point of contact when it comes to PCI DSS compliance, right? Uh, that is, if you are the only person, you are going to be the point of contact. And mostly for most companies, it will amaze you, even he, big companies will have just one person, you know, uh, because where are you really, where are you gonna get PCI training? Just reading online or, oh, I, I got like the requirement list, I'm gonna go through. Uh, you can read it all day, but it's probably gonna be over your head, right? So because there is very limited training and uh, or limited quality training within PCI, uh, if it is not for a QSA company going through PCI SSE or individuals is really non-existent, right? So meaning people are parading around, oh, I'm a PCI DSS subject matter expert, but really are they? You know, it depends. You know, we are here to find out if they get into whatever organization, right? So uh, if you are the girl, that girl or that guy, you're going to be the point of contact. Uh, the, yes like POC, uh, how we normally would call it in the army, you're gonna be the POC for uh, PCI DSS compliance. So anything compliance, anything PCI DSS is gonna be you, right? So you have to uh, know what you are doing uh, because if you are going to be the only person in the organization for that, then if you don't know what you're doing, you're doing yourself a, a big disservice and not only to yourself, but also to your organization, right? You are going to assist with the development of policies, plans, and uh, strategies to stay in compliance with PCI DSS and also you know, any other uh, applicable laws and regulations that might be out there, right? But your baby is gonna be PCI DSS when it comes to uh, you know, staying in compliance with, I mean, you are still the cybersecurity uh, professional there, so you might have other uh, cybersecurity stuff, but PCI DSS uh, is gonna be you. You are going to serve as an internal consultant and advisor uh, in PCI DSS and security uh, matters, but specifically PCI DSS uh, matters. So you are going to be an internal consultant and advisor. So uh, the chances that you'll be working with APA or like higher management or working with your CISO or CIO on regular basis is high because when there's time, when it is time for uh, like compliance or when it's time for uh, assessment, everybody is just gonna turn and look at you, right? And you, you have to make them look good because you don't want to be going back and forth. They failed this or you didn't have this and now you are all over the place, right? So you have to know what you're doing. Uh, you're also going to review, conduct and participate in PCI, uh, DSS attestation and audits. And for, oh, uh, DJ is asking, okay. So uh, I'm just pausing to answer this question real quick. So, uh, DG is asking if our training covers developing policies and uh, yeah, I mean for developing policies, if our entry level course, uh, the uh, uh, how do you call it? The intention for the entry level course will even cover all that, right? But for PCI DSS course, we will give you a whole list of uh, policy templates and how to go about policies and stuff. Yes, so most definitely, I mean uh, that is too easy. So, okay, so let's continue. Uh, now, uh, assistant, you're also gonna assist in developing and executing uh, compliance programs uh, as well. So in some organizations, if you are the only person, you are going to be the, like the, like the guy or the girl managing their PCI DSS program, right? And mostly, uh, reason why, uh, mostly uh, you might wanna take a look at PCI DSS if you really wanna make this a long-term career is that, uh you like if you know what you're doing you're going to be a rock star in that company right and how much you can earn within by being the only person uh people can parade around and say they know but when it's actually you know like it comes to let's do the work uh they will know who is who right and this is an area that you can really master and become a, like a real master or like a real rock star within if you put in the time and the efforts. I'm not gonna say it's easy, it's, it is not easy, but it's doable, right? You can do it. So, because within the organization, if 
uh, you have very high, uh, uh, it's, it's a role that is going to give you very high visibility. Why do I say that? He's if, so let's break it down. If the company fails the audit and they are not allowed to take debit card or credit card information, that is to the extreme, right? Uh, who do you think is going to know about it? The CEO and I mean, everybody who is concerned about the money of the company, <laughs> right? So if they fail, who, who made us fail? I mean, although you are not the person who made them necessarily fail, but it's going to be you, right? If they pass, who made them pass? It's going to be you, right? So you can look good or look really bad, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But it is uh, one area, if you are the girl or the guy, it means the CEO is going to know you. CISO is going to, like, everybody who is anybody within the company will know who you are. If you are just a normal one of the employees within IT, I mean, uh, nobody cares. I mean, there is just, like so many of you. But you, if you are sick during an audit, it's going to be a big problem for everybody, including the CEO. <laughs> right? Because, hey, you know, like, we have to make sure we, we pass this thing. Right. Uh, so uh, if any of you have been involved in audits within your company and how everybody top management is, you know, freaking out about it, you understand what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, so let's move on. So you for some organizations, you are going to be some organizations don't even have a PCI program in place. So you are going to be the one building the program from scratch and making sure it is uh, robust and it is helping your organization. Right. Uh, you're also going to be the liaison between your company and whoever the auditing firm is or whichever auditing firm or the QSA you are dealing with is right, or the QSA company. So uh, you are also going to be coordinating and assisting with PCI DSS audits. That is what I mean by you are going to be the liaison. So you're going to be the person that like the point of contact, like we said in the first uh, item that we looked at. Right. Everything is going to be you. Although you are not the one who is going to be prov uh, providing all the answers and all the evidence, but you will know who to ask for what, right? And exactly, you understand exactly what they are looking for, as opposed to somebody who has no clue about PCI DSS. Even if the auditor is asking them, the auditor probably have to just talk to them and go around and ask it in a different way to be able to really get what they are looking for, right? But you, you know what they like, they know. So, I mean, everything they are saying, you understand the language. That is what I'm trying to say. And uh, you're also going to track uh, documentation and also address any PCI compliance issues in a timely manner, right? So you are going to be the guy or you are going to be the girl who is going to make your company shine, right? Uh, so uh, with PCI, there is a lot of, you know, in our class, we have something we call PCI by numbers. Uh, there is a lot of numbers. some. Things have to be done quarterly, every six months, annually. So there is a whole list of that. And all those are in the requirements, right? But in the course, we've actually pulled all the numbers out. We've made it PCI by the numbers. That way you can easily memorize those. So like that is easy, you know? So you are going to be the, man, man, the, the one managing the quarterly and annual uh, PCI uh, audits, uh, information gathering or evidence gathering, uh, security policy changes and other requirements. Uh, as set forth by uh, PCI, not uh, we are not looking at uh, SOC uh, or SOC uh, PCI audits. So anything evidence gathering, uh, uh, vulnerability scans that had to be conducted, that, that had to be conducted uh, quarterly. You're going to be on on top of that uh, pen testing, internal and external. You're going to be on top of it. I mean, uh, there's a whole list, right? Policies you have to be on top of it as well, right? And uh, you're also going to be coordinating the legal and the risk management aspect uh, and, and the risk uh, management team of the organization. So you are either going to be working with them, not necessarily leading them. The legal side is going to be uh, somebody who is like a lawyer or you know somebody on those lines, with the legal background, right? But risk management and so when we talk about like legal stuff, it's not only pertaining to just Stuff that can take them to court, uh, but PCI DSS falls within the legal aspects. If they are a health company, HIPAA falls within those areas. 
because like cybersecurity borders on uh, a lot of uh, legal aspects of business, right? Uh, if you, because you are dealing with, like, especially when it comes to PCI DSS, you are dealing with customer's credit card and debit card information and other PII. If you don't handle it well and it falls in the hand of the wrong people, your customers can see you, right? Probably see you and take almost all your money. You might probably go out of business if you are not a really strong company, right? So, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, issues are at, at stake. That is why organizations invest a lot of money. And I don't even think they are investing as, uh, as much as they should, right? Because one lawsuit can cost them like $30 million. But are they investing $30 million in cybersecurity professionals like yourself? Uh, if you're in the, in, in the organization, yeah, I don't really think so. They are getting there, you know, because they are still giving some, you know, big money as compared to the national average. But I think they have to give more, right? To motivate more of cybersecurity professionals and aspiring cybersecurity professionals like yourselves to get into the industry, right? The last thing that we'll look at is continuous monitoring. So continuous monitoring is going to be your big, uh, after, the, uh, after a company passes an assessment, uh, that is where they are most likely to encounter a breach because once they pass the audit, you know, going through all that stress and passing, they go to sleep. And that is where uh, hackers will also uh, wake up, <laughs> right? So uh, passing the audit is not the end all be all. You have to make sure you are staying in compliance because your uh, IT infrastructure within your organization is not static. Is dynamic. It changes new technology, uh, new hardware, new software. So if you are not doing anything about it, and you are not trying to, you know, stay in compliance, then you might run into issues. Okay. So these are some of the things you will be doing, or you might be doing. This is not all of it. There is a whole list, and also depending on the organization, uh, there is more to it. But this is generally uh, most of the stuff that you're going to be doing. And uh, so, I mean, just to give you a, a fair idea of what you'll be doing, I don't think this, if you know uh, PCI uh, in and out uh, and you just didn't read it online, but you know, you went through somebody who really knew what they are teaching you and they taught you well, all this is gonna be uh, really a, a walk uh, in the park for you, right? Th this is not gonna be over your head. And for people who think, uh, I don't wanna be too technical, uh, and technical meaning they don't want to be dealing with like cryptography and you know deep stuff. Uh, this is an area that you can look at, right? Because like look at most of the stuff that we are looking at. Uh, if you understand PCI in and out, you can easily handle like handle this for any organization, right? And this is not like what these uh, uh, like these duties that we are looking at. They are not like they don't pertain like they don't they are not that restricted to any. Uh, uh, industry. If you are in the health industry, probably you'll be doing the same thing. If you are in the retail industry, you'll be doing the same thing. If you are in hospitality industry, you'll be doing the same thing because PCI is the same across board and everybody needs it because guess what? Everybody loves money. <laughs> every organization or every industry loves money. And now money is carried on credit cards and debit cards. So guess what? Uh, everybody has to stay in compliance with PCI DSS.